that we're uh, starting with here as far as uh, Russia is concerned. Uh, a passenger plane with 65 passengers and six crew on board has crashed in the last hour or so, just outside Moscow, about 50 kilometres away from uh, where I'm talking to you now, just minutes after it took off. Uh, details still very sketchy. Murad Gazdiev uh, brought uh, us the latest of what we knew just about 20 minutes ago, but the situation is fast changing. It's a two-hour flight. These are, these are done, you know, they, these are flown every day multiple times. Mm. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary. But we now have reports that witnesses saw reportedly, this is unverified, but mm. this is what we're seeing from various news sources, witnesses saw a flaming aircraft mm. crash. It disappeared seven minutes after takeoff from Domodedovo uh, Airport. Just seven minutes after takeoff, it disappeared mm. uh, from radars. I've got to mention the weather in Moscow. It's been awful, atrocious this past week or so. Very poor visibility. Moscow was absolutely buried. The city was paralyzed. Yeah, Murad's on his way there now. As I say, the uh, uh, weather in Moscow, at the, I'm sure you've seen the headlines, uh, has been extremely snow over the past week or so. It seems they can only get to the crash site by foot. Uh, online, uh, Jerry Soyetman, independent aviation consultant. Jerry, thanks for coming on at such short notice. We appreciate it. As I say, with all these things, details very sketchy in the early stages. We are expected to hear more details coming in, though, within the next hour or so. It doesn't sound like it's a, a, a good scene there. Uh, just looking on Twitter, it seems that this flight, uh, number 6 W. 703 en route from Domodedovo Airport, of course, one of Moscow's main three airports, to a place uh, called Orsk. It's near the Kazakhstan border, pretty much in uh, central southern Russia. It looks like it fell off the radar screens at about 6,400 feet. That's what they call the initial climb, I guess. It's still climbing, isn't it, at that point? Yes, I mean, we'd expect that it'll be cruising at about 30,000, 30,000 feet. Uh, so this is still in the climb phase, but. Uh, I just saw the uh, the recordings of some of the flight paths that has been recorded by ADSB uh, mm. uh, websites. Uh, it does look like that there were some intermediate climbs, and uh, at, so it reached about eight, uh, eighteen thousand feet, also six sorry six thousand feet, and then it uh, the, the the recording seems to have plunged. So it's still. A, bit questionable what really happened. Yeah, I this mean, is, there, there uh, could be so many causes, but I suppose one of the yeah. first causes you think about, I mean, snow isn't particularly a problem for a plane if it's, if it's been de-iced properly or so, uh, and no reason to think that hasn't happened. Domodedovo Airport's a very busy airport, very professional airport. Um, talking about the climb, again, we're just speculating until we get some details in, but talking about the climb, it is a potentially tricky time for a plane when those engines are on max power all it takes is one of those turbines to break. You see it time and again, but it shouldn't necessarily bring the plane down, should it? No, a, a single engine failure should not bring the plane down. Even a double failure, uh, you should have enough time for the crew to notify the ATC and, if possible, find a, a place to put it down, uh, to put the aircraft down in, in a more of a controllable fashion. But, you know, mm. hearing the report saying that, you know, unlikely people would have survived, I we can suspect that it's a pretty catastrophic impact, mm. uh, assuming that those reports are right. Um, you again, said you were looking at the flight path yeah. there. Tell us a bit more about that. What have, what have, what have you seen so far, then, in, in your initial investigation into this? Well, it's a normal the, the departure out of uh, Domodovo Airport. Uh, it climbed to, was it uh, 6,400 feet or so? But it never stayed at the altitude. So that's when it started to have a descent and then a climb and then a descent again. That's the last that we that, that we had it, on record for the moment. And, and it looks like, uh, I mean, it all depends on what the crash scene looks like, I guess, very early days. Yes. Um, but the air yes. crash investigators, Definitely. as soon as they get to that site, they'll be able to work out, depending on the spread of it, whether the plane sort of broke up in the air, whether it, whether it uh, broke up. As it, as it crashed. Our thoughts, of course, very much with the family and friends of the, all the passengers and the crew there. If you're just joining us, this is RT International. Um, we've got Jerry on the line here. Uh, Going to stay with us, hopefully, for another uh, couple yep. of minutes as we try and take this apart a bit more. But just to tell our viewers uh, the headline here, it's flight number 6W703. It's the Saratov Airlines passenger plane that uh, took off earlier this afternoon from Domodedovo Airport, one of Moscow's uh, three main airports, very busy airport too. It was an internal flight. Uh, 
and we believe it crashed around about 50 to 60 kilometres uh, southeast of Moscow. We think it only got to about 6,400 feet. That's a similar type of plane, an Antonov, you're seeing on your screens there, uh, 148. Jerry, uh, an Antonov 148. Now, um, Russian planes, uh, until about a decade ago, were problematic. Thinking about the Tupolev 154s, the Tupolev 134s, they've largely been phased out now. Um, certainly don't see many of them in Europe. There aren't many uh, uh, Russian carriers using them now. For one, as well as being a bit unreliable towards the end, uh, they burned a lot of fuel. So most of the uh, Russian companies now, the internal companies, they use Airbus, they use Boeings, they use Embraer's. This one's slightly different. Is it a Russian plane or a Ukrainian plane, an AN-148? It's, it's both. <laughs> uh, it, is, it was up until a few years ago, it was produced both in the, in the Ukraine and also in, uh, in Russia, in, uh, I think, uh, Voroshnesh. So uh, they definitely stopped producing, I think it was last year. Mm. Uh, there's about 50 in service, most of them are in Russia. But um, a pretty modern this plane, is the... it's a new design, yeah. It is. It is a new design. It's, uh, you know, uh, Antonov claims it's equivalent in terms of, of um, on how modern it is to the, the Western counterparts. It is fly-by-wire aircraft, just like the Airbuses. But again, we, this is also uh, one of the types that was uh, that, that, that Russia and the Ukraine hoped on to gain commercial success in the post-Soviet era. This is the what we call the second generation post Soviet aircraft. And doing a quick wiki search on it, ironic that last year was branded the safest uh, year to fly, wasn't it? 2017. I think this is, as far as I know, one of the first plane crashes, we believe, so far this year. Sadly, it's happened here in Russia, uh, and it does look like all 65 passengers and crew have perished, but we've yet to confirm that, so we've got a crew heading there now. Um, what do we know about this company, Saratov Airlines? They were part of Aeroflot at one stage. They've been going for a long while, since 1931. There was a bit of a security, a, a safety concern about them about a year or so ago, but it seems that was overcome, yeah? Yeah. Um, again, this is one of those, uh, what, we, what we outside would call one of the small Russian airlines, uh, but uh, as uh, you know, past 2010, you know, the, you know, we would say that survivors would have had to evolve to, you know, to, mm. to live on. And uh, if this was like 10 years ago, you know, we can almost brand it as one of those questionable operations. But mm. uh, this is we are now in the post-consolidation era of the Soviet airline, sort of the Russian airline industry. So, uh, and uh, interestingly enough, most of, all of their aircraft, except for the one. So sort of most of the aircraft uh, have been uh, the uh, Russian aircraft. They, they do operate about five Yakolev uh, 42s, mm -hmm. but they're beginning to introduce the Embraer 195. Now that's a you know that is a Western uh, that is a Brazilian aircraft. Yeah. Now interestingly, also the Antonov 148s that Saratov operates, it, I think it's the ones that uh, Rossiya Airlines used to operate. So I think mm. Rossiya Airlines stopped operating that and they transferred it to another taker, which in this case was... Uh, Looking uh, at the Zardoff. history of this plane, while you're talking, I'm, I'm doing a quick wiki check on that and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. It looks like there, were, there'd been no, there was an accident in its development around about 2011, but it looks like there'd been no other, fatal, no, no other fatal accidents of that plane over the years since then, over the last decade or so, since it was brought in around about uh, 2004, that plane first took... Uh, to the skies testing. Jerry, we're going to leave it for now. Jerry Soyat, my independent aviation consultant, thanks again for coming on short notice uh, and uh, uh, telling us what you know about this plane, indeed this airline as well. If you just joined us, this is RT International. My name's Kevin Owen. There's uh, one story starting to dominate our coverage now this hour. A plane with 71 passengers and crew on board has crashed shortly after it took off from Moscow's International Domodedovo Airport. It's an Antonov, as we just heard, 148 airplane operated by a company called Saratov Airlines. At the time, it took off around about 2 o'clock this afternoon local time. It was heading to Orsk, uh, that's a city close to the Russian border with Kazakhstan, basically heading southeast from Moscow. Eyewitnesses reportedly say they saw that plane on fire before it went down. There were reportedly 65 passengers and six crew on board. If you're concerned about uh, friends, family, loved ones, passengers or crew there, we believe the flight number is 6. 
W703. Once again, that flight number of the uh, plane involved here, 6W703, a Saratov Airlines internal flight today from uh, Moscow to uh, southeast Russia. Emergency teams have reached the crash site. Now, it's about 50, 60 kilometers from Moscow, but bad weather here at the moment. There's been heavy snow over the last week or so. They are reporting bodies on the ground at the moment. One eyewitness uh, is, according to one news agency, Interfax, uh, saying that uh, there is little hope for any of the uh, crew and the passengers there. We are yet to corroborate that. We're sending our senior correspondent, Murad Gazdi, over there now. He's on his way. It's going to take a while because the weather is pretty bad. And as you just heard, you can't uh, totally get there by car. Some of that journey has to be on foot. But we've got crews going there now. We're, of course, going to be the prime channel to bring you up to date on the latest here. A very unfortunate story on our patch. Uh, the area is near a village 60 kilometres south of Moscow, as I say. Still no word on what may have caused that plane to come down. It was in the initial climb. Uh, tracking seems to suggest it was about 6,400 feet up into the air, but it would be going up to, of course, usual climbing altitudes between 30 and 40,000 feet for that kind of plane. Investigators say all versions still of what's gone so badly wrong here are being considered at this point.